Okay, um, so we're gonna call the meeting to order at 6.13 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, just introducing myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin Johnston. I'm the Pacific Region Representative. Um, I've been born and raised in Bishop, California, um, where the water flows um, of Paihunaru. It's um, just where I live in Bishop, California. Um, I'm 16 years old. Um, I'm a junior at Bishop Union High School. Um, I'm the Pac Pacific Region Rev and the president of the Bishop Tribal Youth Council. Um, and that's... Recording in progress. Sorry, that was an echo, but, um, so we're going to start off with an opening prayer if anyone wants to volunteer. I can uh, do it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Must say, I think you got feedback, Greg. Okay. On your uh, audio. Must say, Twelfth ninth man, say to none, say to song to spray, oh mercy step. Mercy, just thank you, Lord, for today that we come before you at this time as we come together for the Pacific Regional uh, Native Youth Meetup. Thanking you for all the Native youth in our Pacific region that are joining us today, the members of the executive committee, members of the different peer cohorts and our staff, as that you lead us uh, throughout. Uh, this regional meetup that uh, all goes according to your way and that you'll um, continue to bless the, our native youth in the pacific region and all of our unity native youth and that whatever is discussed today that uh, whatever issues come up that we can handle these issues in a positive manner and that you'll continue to bless our unity organization and all of native youth in your name must say folks man man satan none Say to spray, oh, my sister. Back to you, Representative Johnston. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, next on our agenda, we're just going to do a check in. And so it's going to be like mixing with the icebreaker. So you, um, if we can go around and just say mm -hmm. what everyone's name is and their favorite color and how they're feeling today. So I'll start, um, again, my name is Caitlin Johnston. Um, I like to be called Katie, so um, my name is Katie, and my favorite color is red, and I'm feeling very good today. Ran a mile for PE, so I'm feeling a little tired, but I feel good. Does anyone want to volunteer to go next? I can go next. All right, hi everyone. My name is Audrey Mitchell. I am Navajo and Cheyenne, um, enrolled member of the Colorado River Indian Tribes. And I am currently serving as the female co-president for the EC. And I feel pretty good today, kind of tired. Um, and my favorite color would have to be uh, purple. I squatchy, you have Nashai Cha, Alaikum Sinsna, Askanuski, I am Chaak Shwa. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Arakawa. I'm uh, honored to serve as Secretary and Northwest Regional Representative to the National Youth Council. Um, doing good, just came back from a uh, two mile walk on our beach, so uh, doing good. I think my favorite color would be uh, gray. So, hot and soon. thank you. Okay, I'll go next. Tante Kiwa, Watan Wilfred and Sigas, and Asni Wati Tikutinia, and Gutwas at Neta Tapunan. Egua Yat Eshik Edo Shidene Esha Air Watson would read in a share, Tabahan Ishle, Chippa Cree Bashashim, but Atni Dashache, Chippa Cree Dashinelle. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Watson Woodford. I come from the Chippa Cree tribe in the Navajo Nation, and I'm currently attending the Navajo Preparatory School. Farmington, New Mexico as a junior 
and I'm really glad to be here. Um, glad to come here and support and listen in. And um, my favorite color is green um, because of all the plants. I just, I don't know. And they're all coming back. It's springtime, so it makes me feel good. Awesome. And my sister, she'll just unmute for them right here. Want to go? Okay, here. Go ahead, go. Um, is it turned out? Yes. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm 14 from Bishop, California, and I'm the treasurer on the Bishop Trevor Youth Council. Awesome. And what's your favorite color? My favorite color is red. Awesome. So next we'll just do a quick um, reconnection with our region. So um, during the past um, couple months, um, I've been just trying to um, do as much as I can, as well as stay um, doing good in school. But um, so I've been trying to volunteer a lot and reach out to um, youth councils that um, I have contact with. Um, so emailing, um, social media is really nice because um, you can just press their names. Um, but. Um, just going around, there is not really anyone from this region on this meetup right now, but um, just we can just go around, <laughs> right, Greg? Um, go around and see what it's like because COVID is still um, very big, even though a lot of um, counties and states are opening up or um, like. COVID restrictions are still up. So um, like in California right now, well, in the Inyo County where I live, um, the mass restriction is lifted. So it feels back to normal, but um, there's still a lot of places you have to wear a mask. Ooh. Like um, here at the education center, um, I'm in my mom's office, so I don't have a mask on, but um, they still require masks. The tribe here still requires masks, um, hospitals, like those kind of places still. Um, but other than that, like um, COVID, it um, seems like it never existed, to be honest. But um, so um, our youth council is meeting in um, in person meetup um, every other Sunday, and we get to volunteer a lot more because of no mask restrictions. So it's been really nice for. Um, the Bishop Youth Council, but um, maybe we can just go see how other youth councils and other regions are going um, because I think that's um, all that we have on this meeting right now is other regions. And so we can just go around and see how it's like um, in your guys' region. So whoever wants to go first. Feel free to share. I, I'll, I'll share real quick here. Um, I think like other regions, we're still uh, uh, equally, you know, dealing with the, uh, the uh, different issues associated with COVID-19. Uh, many of our states here in, our, in the Northwest are opening up and um, just as Representative Johnston mentioned, it's like as if COVID never uh, existed. And that's the same with the tribes in the state of Washington, they're following the state. Um, but of course, the issues with COVID still uh, are uh, still around. And um, so I think uh, there's going to be a lot of healing that needs to take place as we continue to navigate out of this uh, unprecedented time. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I don't have too much to share because um, 
you know, I'm not a part of any youth councils, but the youth around me and um, the, you know, I'm, I'm trying to set up a youth council in Montana, but, you know, that's kind of taking a while. It's, you know, but I think it, like um, Jonathan said, you know, there's going to have to be a lot of healing that's going to be happening after all this COVID from people that have been passing away and getting sick. And, you know, that's something that I think we have to overcome, um, that we have to work with each other and help each other heal. Um, and then also for many people just being online, you know, that's something hard too. It, it messes up with their um, social connections and their um, you know, being able to speak to other people and things like that. So, you know, I think kind of pushing more of that too um, and to help people feel more comfortable with speaking up and talking more with other people. And that's one of the things that I've noticed, you know, it's, it's not, um, it's different now. It's, it's a different, no, it's a new normal, you know, Mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that that could be challenging you know getting youth uh initiated or mm -hmm. you know having them start their own initiative in trying to do these different things and being in these leadership roles um, my mom just recently said that she was talking to some students at the school in rocky boy and they didn't seem too interested in a youth council so that was, you know, and they're like two of my closest friends. And, you know, I was kind of disappointed in that. But, you know, I think, um, I think there's ways, there's, there's, there are ways that we can help get um, younger people interested in these leadership positions and getting back on track. So, uh, yeah. Let me just add to what uh, Watson just shared. And, and Watson, that's to be expected uh, for the young people. I think um, what would be helpful, um, and I know that uh, you're a leader within your yourself and within your own family, Watson, I see that in you. It's only, maybe it just takes just you to encourage others to do that because you have a good following, Watson. You have a good heart. And I think uh, with that, you could help make that change within your tribal community. I mean, take me for instance, I attended my first unity conference in 1985 and as a college student, and I, it took me about two years to take what I learned from unity and to take it back to my tribe in 1987. And so it took over a year for me to develop the Gila River Youth Council and it was a challenging time for the community because this was before casinos. Gila River didn't have the resources, so relied on funding or fundraising efforts to get it going. So it is possible, you know, it just takes only one person to do that. And Watson, it may just be you to get it going and to get other young people motivated within your, the Chippewa Cree tribe to do that. And that's all it takes because that's how it started at Gila River. I know all tribes are different, governments are different, but I believe with the person that you are, Watson, you have that uh, vision to do that. And I know that uh, you have a good heart and a lot of people respect you. Even, you know, uh, we observed you at mid year and, you know, wow, you know, Watson, you have some gifts. And I think uh, your people are very fortunate to have you. So, those are just my comments. Audrey, Madam President. Yeah, um, I guess things are kind of the same that I see with youth councils. Some of them are, um, you know, meeting back up in person, which is good. Um, but also, I know there are some tribal youth councils that are still trying to be careful in meeting up virtually. Um, and I do see a lot more youth like out in the community, but, you know, still um, trying to wear masks and stuff and try to be as safe as they can. But, you know, 
they are they are starting to get back out there um, in the community, which is you know really good to see. So uh, hopefully one day we can get back to you know how things were with seeing all the youth councils um, you know doing more out in the community. Great. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, Representative Johnson, we have the president on the call. Awesome. Isaiah, would you like to um, introduce yourself? Yeah, can you see me? Okay, cool. Uh, well, hi, I'm Tilikum Naikanim Isaiah Fisher, uh, Nike Myth Light Cover Ground on Oregon. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Isaiah Fisher. I'm a medical president. Uh, I currently reside in Grand Island, Oregon, and I'm an enrolled member of the Confederate Tribes of Slits Indians. Um, thank you guys for coming. I know I'm running a little late. I just got off work uh, a little bit ago. Um, but I'm here, I'm happy to support. I'm happy to see you all. Okay, um, just before you um, unmute, I'm at mute and um, we were talking about what it's like in your region and just like within co with COVID and how it's like just checking in with our regions because there's not really any specific. So we're just going around sharing um, what it's like in your region and um, if COVID is still affecting it. Um, definitely. Uh, COVID here in the Northwest is still really big. I know Oregon and Washington, I know we have uh, our Secretary Jonathan here. Um, our governors are like-minded. So if one state is going to do something about COVID, the other state is going to do almost the exact same thing. Uh, I know our mask mandate ended, uh, look at my calendar, it ended on the 12th. Yeah, it ended around the 12th here in Oregon, but I still see plenty of people wearing their masks. I know, uh, I want to say a week before my last trip, so two weeks ago, uh, my work lifted their mask mandate. Um, so, I mean, COVID's still big. I know there's some people in my work who still wear a mask, um, but overall, COVID's still really big here in the Northwest. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Um, next on our agenda, um, item G is restoring the spirit of Native view. Um, this is like one of the, our resolutions that we passed in the business meeting, I believe. Um, so, um, Katie, let me pull. Have a lot of notes. Let me pull What's up here. I'm gonna pull up the uh, resolution. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I have. Okay. It's too scary. And Representative Johnson, you have uh, on the call Secretary Arcala, who serves as the resolution committee chair. And then, of course, the co-president, if you need help on the resolution. Okay, should I just read it and like? Sure, if you want, or have Jonathan read it too. I could read it. I, I think <laughs> I could do it. Okay, so uh, this is re resolution 02-26-22. Um, the title is Restoring the Spirit of Native Youth Initiative, um, whereas the National Unity Council, NUC, represents an American Indian and Alaskan Native youth who are members of the 325 affiliated youth councils that operate in 36 states, and whereas the, the Executive Committee has been elected by the representatives of the NUC to act on its behalf between its yearly business meetings and whereas Unit, United National Indian Tribal Youth Inc. is committed to promoting the leadership development of American Indian and Alaska Native youth 
and whereas Unity's mission to foster the spiritual, mental, physical, and social development of American Indian and Alaskan Native youth, and whereas the executive committee realizes due to COVID-19 pandemic, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many Unity-affiliated youth councils have been inactive and struggling with social interactions, access to leadership opportunities, community engagement, and youth services, and maintaining connections with culture and traditions, and whereas the executive committee is committed to empowering Native youth to revive their culture and traditions, restore youth councils in person or virtually fostering relationships between Native youth and tribal leadership, and identifying assets and restoring within their communities, resources within their communities, and whereas the res Restoring the spirit of Native youth is an initiative for all Native youth to overcome the difficulties associated by the COVID-19 pandemic. And now, therefore, be, be resolved that the, Nas the National Unity Council hereby endorse, endorses the em implement, I don't know how to say it, implement, implementation implementation of the restoring the spirit of native youth initiative and identify resources in an effort to support unity affiliated youth councils and individuals by the following taking talking circles and creating new initiatives provide training for asset mapping to identifying resources in tribal communities and recommend safe spaces for gathering in compliance with CDC and tribal health protocols. Okay, that's the gist of the resolution. Uh, Representative Johnston, mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, resolution chair. Maybe he could explain further what the initiative is and what the rollout will be like. Yes, so thank you, Greg and Representative Johnston. Uh, the, purpose, the purpose of this resolution is a, an issue, several issues that we as an executive committee seen um, from the time we were elected uh, in Dallas, Texas in July of 2021, and which is that uh, many youth councils have fell off uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, our youth are struggling. And so the purpose of this resolution is as it's, as it's what its title is, is restoring the spirit of native youth. And as you've seen in the now therefore be it resolved, uh, some of the things that we wanna see um, happen uh, and what we will recommend uh, to our affiliated youth councils and individuals um, and so we will uh, um, be here to support our, our youth councils, not only in the Pacific region, but all of our regions uh, throughout our network. And so the rollout of this initiative is taking place next month. And uh, so the plan for, for that is each month um, is we're going to have um, town halls, virtual town halls, uh, with the first one being with our executive committee officers, our co-presidents, our vice president, and myself, the secretary, which will be on April 12th, 2022 at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then we'll have another uh, town hall on May 18th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time with four of our representatives. And then on, we'll have our final one leading. This is, a, so this is all leading up to the national conference. Uh, the last one will be June 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with four more of our uh, representatives. And so we're looking forward to further explaining the resolution as we roll it out. This is part of our rollout. 
And so uh, we're looking forward to supporting through this resolution, this initiative. So this will become a, a unity initiative through the executive committee, this year's executive committee to really help our youth councils and our individual youth uh, come out of this pandemic, uh, whether it's through talking circles, which the peer guides cohort has a healing, um, uh, healing circle initiative. And so this accompanies our resolution. And so we felt it was appropriate in discussions with our uh, the program, our program manager, Lauren Ashley Buford, and uh, members of the uh, cohort, uh, that this would be appropriate and that we it wouldn't be something that we would have to uh, spearhead as an executive committee. So that's just the gist of what we see as an executive committee. And um, I like to uh, possibly afford time to our co-presidents if they have any remarks uh, regarding this, but you know, I just have to publicly uh, uh, give uh, gratitude to our co-presidents, vice presidents, members of the executive committee and the members of the unity staff for their support uh, as the resolutions chair, as we developed this resolution uh, following the vision that was given to us by the executive committee. So hot Nixon, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing. Um, <clears throat> would anyone, Audrey or Isaiah, like to share anything? Else? Yeah, um, I think Jonathan mostly covered it. You, <clears throat> you know, the EC has been working really hard for um, this initiative, and it's something that we felt that the native youth in our communities really needed is support um, because of everything that they have um, encountered and gone through since the pandemic. And so it was really nice to get to see uh, our resolution get passed uh, during the business meeting back in February. And now is the time that we will be rolling out this initiative and hopefully getting more Native youth involved within their communities and with unity as well. So <laughs> that's all I have to say. Yes, I really agree. Um, thank you for sharing. Isaiah, did you have anything you wanted to add? I think Jonathan really covered it, but. No, honestly, uh, Jonathan took the words out of my mouth, really. Um, <laughs> just go. <laughs> um, just going over like how much this really means to us and how much like all of our EC really worked on this. Um, really passing it was big, but also uh, passing it with NTI was a really big one too. Um, just really, we all worked hard on this and we're all super proud of it. And yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, if there's nothing else, um, we can move on to item H, announcements. Um, so the town halls for the um, restoring the spirit of Native youth. Um, the first one is on April 11th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so if you guys are available, um, Watson, um, that's the first one, April 11th at 4 p.m. Um, the Earth Day webinar, you probably know. Um, do you know anything, um, any information about that Watson that you want would like to add? Um, yeah, so I could share a little bit. Awesome. Um, okay, so we just recently been talking about uh, Earth Day webinar between the Earth Ambassadors. And, you know, we're thinking of doing a um, we're still unsure on what we're really going to do, but we want to have the Earth Ambassadors talk and almost be a conversation, but also like um, kind of like segments. Um, we'll segment it and talk about our different things. We're, we don't want to really talk about our um, platforms that much because we've been pretty, we've been hitting pretty hard on it at, 
these conferences and when we're presenting and things like that. So, you know, we kind of want to move away from that, but not fully move away from it, you know. So, well, you know, that'll kind of keep us grounded in our direction, but we want to present um, on how we could help the earth and the name of it. Um, I, I named it, but I, I, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> like um, healing our mother earth. I think that's what it was, healing our mother earth or something awesome. like that. Yeah. Um, and so it's, I'm excited for it. You know, it's going to be a, um, you know, we're going to be talking about different ways you know i think we're even going to be talking about how you could do these projects within your own communities and how to get it started in that way so you know we're still in the planning process with that but we should be um having something out um or maybe on social media or something um hopefully soon um so we'll we'll get it out to you guys but yeah thank you Thank you, Watson. And just to let uh, Representative Johnston, the co-presidents, and Mr. Secretary know that it's in the planning phases right now. And uh, we are working with our Earth Ambassador mentor, Frank Weaver, who's going to help me organize it with all of our Earth Ambassadors who are going to participate in that event. So uh, we had an online uh, texting this this just before we got on the call, we have some a lot of, of our Earth ambassadors that are stepped up to participate in this event. So we will let the you guys know when that event. Well, the event is going to be on National Earth Day or on Healing Our Mother Earth uh, Day on April twenty second. So we will let you know. Thank you. Awesome, and thank you, Watson, for sharing. Um, that's my mom. She's waving. Hi. Hi, Carrie. I wanted to tell Jonathan thank you for um, the tip and the advice on early booking of flights, rooms, and registration. I saw that the other day, and I already got things going. I have to get some PO approval. I do have a budget that is specific to, you know, uh, Unity. So I will be um, trying to get everything going. Our... Um, Pilot project is going to be the Dream the Impossible at um, UC Long Beach or whatever it's called. Um, if that goes good and the youth are good, my supervisor is ready to start booking everything for nationals. Sounds, sounds good. Thank you, Carrie. Got to hi, Mom. My other workshop. Hi, Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. Hi, Audrey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so. Moving on, um, just the other two um, town halls. Um, the second one, um, I just have um, notes who is helping or like leading them, but the second one is May 18th at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, and the third one, June 15th um, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, the last announcement was um, the National Unity Conference um, on July 7th through the 12th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, so Greg was just telling me before this meeting started to just um, mention again to make sure to book your flights early, um, especially with the gas prices, he was telling me. so. Um, just make sure you guys um, get your flights and everything good. Um, I know that this is going to be recorded, so just make sure you guys book your flights um, ahead of time as soon as possible so you can attend the conference. Um, because once you um, are booking those earlier flights, they're a lot cheaper than waiting till last second. Um, and... Greg, was there anything I else I needed to mention? Um, other than what uh, your mom, Carrie, mentioned, uh, to plan ahead for the National Conference, we are working to bring 2,000 Native youth to Minneapolis. We have a very active local planning committee 
that's uh, involved in a lot of local planning activities for the national conference. So again, we're looking forward to seeing you in Minneapolis. So thank you. Awesome, thank you, Greg. And lastly, I am I um, a closing prayer or that's not the last one, almost last one. Um, would anyone like to volunteer to do a closing prayer for this meeting? Um, yeah, I can. I, I could say a closing okay, prayer. Hey, Mamu Tawin on Kese Mantu, Gawin on a ski, Nutuo Tayokan Kihi with New Awas, a sweet sake, sake, gua, Pia Suwag. I ask you today that we can, that this information that we learned at this meeting, that we could take it back to us, take to our communities and use it in a good way to help our communities and that we could all go back home this evening or we could, you know, some of us are home already. We could be protected on our journeys and the way on our walk of life and we could continue that way I ask that we could all feel good. We could all be happy and healthy. Our families can be happy and healthy, our friends. That we could all be protected. Even though the sickness is still going on, this COVID-19, we could still be protected from it. And we could help each other in this time of need. We could all come together. We could come together as one and help each other in that way. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, people that are against each other and don't want to work with each other. And that makes it hard to go through these things, to do these things, to get things done. But I ask that we could come together and work as one to help one another, to love one another, to respect one another that way. I'm very thankful for everything. And I'm very thankful I'm able to be here to say this prayer. It was meant to be. And I'm glad to be here. I ask that we could all go home safely. We could all enjoy our evenings, go to bed and wake up in a good way. We could feel good tomorrow morning when we wake up and, um, and we could greet the morning sun and all the things that wake up in the morning, we could greet them in a good way. Very thankful for everything. Very thankful for all these people here in this meeting. I ask that we could continue this in a good way. Hi, hi. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and lastly, um, item J, adjournment. Um, do I make a motion or do I just say the time? No, nope, just say the time. Yeah? Um, it's 6.51 Pacific Standard Time. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, we were hoping that there was more people, um, but thank you to um, all of you who joined. I appreciate it a lot. Good job, Kate. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Steady and hard, Watson. You too, Katie. You too, Isaiah. <laughs> I'll try.